Technical Standing Committee on Human Resource for Tuesday, March 30th, 2021. And then uh, I would like to say that I'm filling in today for Rafa Descanso. And um, we'll proceed along very quickly. We're going to be doing ABCs. Uh, we will consider appointments for ABCs and uh, the members and committee clerk and legislative council should keep their videos on throughout the morning meeting with their microphones on mute unless I can uh, call on them to speak. They should turn on their own microphone before speaking and then put it back on mute afterwards. And if you have any uh, devices with you, such as your phone, please uh, put on silent. Please try not leave your seat during the meetings unless it's absolutely necessary. If you do, please leave your camera on, but your audio muted. Uh, that way we know you have, we have quorum and we know whether you are present. If a, vo a vote is called for, if I need to confer privacy with the clerk or the legislative council, or if members wish to confer before a vote, I may call for a brief recess. If any members have technical problems, please phone and text the uh, clerk. I will now ask for committee members to introduce themselves for the record and stating their name and constituency. I will start first with the uh, NDP members, if you would like to uh, proceed and uh, introduce yourself, maybe with Kendra first. Good morning, I'm Kendra Coombs, the MLA for Cape Breton Center. Claudia. Good morning, Claudia Chender, MLA for Dartmouth South. Ms. Mr. Harrison. Brad John. No. Good morning, Larry Harrison. MLA for Colchester, Muscadabin Valley. Brad, you're next. Can you hear me, Brad? Uh, thank you, Brad. Brad Johns, MLA for Beaver Bank. Uh, you're a little mixed up there sound-wise, but we'll go on with uh, Gordon. Good morning, uh, Gordon Wilson, MLA for Claire Digby. Tony. Good morning, Tony Ince, MLA for Coal Harbor, Portland Valley. Leo. Uh, good morning, uh, Leo Glavine, uh, MLA for Kings West. And Ben. Good morning, folks. Ben Jessam, MLA Hammonds Plains, Lucasville, and today I'm filling in for Rafa Di Costanza. And we have our uh, Ledge TV or Ledge uh, Council. Gordon. You're on mute. Gordon Hab, Chief Legislative Council. And our clerk, Judy Cavanaugh. So um, we are here today to do the agency boards and commissions, and uh, we can start out uh, directly with that. And uh, we'll go through the, uh, the two committees that we have. And uh, Gordon, uh, maybe Gordon Wilson, uh, please, would you uh, begin with the Department of Environment and Climate Change? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to nominate for the Roundtable on Environment and Sustainable Prosperity the following uh, as members. Uh, Graham Gangnong, Jeffrey Bishop, Michael Raymond, William Simpkins, Jeff McCollum, Louise Delisle, Marla McLeod, Maxine McLean, Sarah Riley, Savannah DeWolf, Susanna Fuller, and Rochelle Owen. Can you make that a motion, do you, Gordon? Yes, I do. Okay. Before we vote, uh, Brad, Mr. Johns, MLA, 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I uh, I do want to make a couple quick comments before we vote on this. I uh, thank uh, the minister for her letter, mm -hmm. and I think it's uh, wonderful to see these 12 uh, appointments coming forward. I believe that uh, gives us a full slate of 15, so I'm quite uh, anxious to see uh, the roundtable moving forward and, and getting down to work. Um, I'm curious to know uh, what the meeting schedule is and and uh, when they're looking at holding their first meeting, I don't know if we can uh, send correspondence to the minister and ask that. But uh, other than that, I think this is great news today. Um, so I'm in support of this motion. Thank you. Mr. Johns, I, I uh, think that's a normal question to ask on how they'd be setting up and how often they will meet. So uh, we'll send a note off to see uh, what the, the answer is to that. I don't know personally right now. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Any other questions? Claudia Schender. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I, like uh, Mr. Johns, am pleased after a couple of years of waiting for these appointments to see them finally come forward as delayed as they have been. Um, and just for the record, you know, we have a climate crisis. This government um, initiated an emergency debate on that crisis, and yet it has taken two years for this uh, board to be filled, which um, is disappointing, but we are glad to see the board filled. Um, I uh, We do have questions about uh, the makeup of this board. And, you know, I think many of us spent at least some time yesterday listening to presentations to the law amendment committee on the biodiversity act um, and i think one of the themes that came forward in that conversation is the influence that um you know certain industry and lobby groups have on government policies and priorities um, and so one of the things that struck me as a member of the Law Amendments Committee yesterday was hearing from a real diversity of views from woodlot owners. So we heard woodlot owners who were skeptical of the act um, and who had challenges with the content, but we heard also from a lot of woodlot owners who represented themselves as you know, ecologists and sustainable foresters and, you know, who said, look, we, we, you know, we, we know there are other acts out there that have similar penalties. We know these will be applied um, judiciously and reasonably. Um, and we want to do our part in addressing the climate crisis and in the biodiversity aspect of that in particular. However, um, on this round table, we see uh, Mr. Jeff Bishop representing the forestry industry. And uh, we have questions about that. So one of the questions that we have is, is Forest Nova Scotia, do they have a seat on this round table or is it Mr. Bishop's seat? And is he representing himself or is he representing the forestry industry? Because if he's representing the forestry industry, um, then I would submit based just on yesterday that he's not representing the full diversity of that forestry industry. Um, and, you know, I think particularly after the somewhat, I would say, disingenuous campaign that Forest Nova Scotia had a part in uh, around um, the Biodiversity Act, Bill Number Four, that's moving its way through through our legislature, um, which has, uh, you know, resulted so far in some, again, quite disappointing uh, amendments to the Act from government. Um, I'm not sure that we would be comfortable if he was the sole representative of the forestry industry. We see in terms of environmentalists and nonprofits, um, great representation. We have real climate leaders, you know, folks like Susanna Fuller and Marla McLeod and Sarah Riley and Scott Skinner and, you know, people who have a lot of um, you know, a great reputation and, and we'll do the yeoman's work there. Um, but we also know that there are forestry is a massive part of this province. And we want to make sure that 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 large canopy of foresters um, also has the ability to be properly represented at this table. So um, I know the former minister is, is here with us, but I won't ask him to answer questions about uh, the department. But I would ask um, that we write a letter 
um, and ask, you know, I guess my two questions are, uh, is, does Mr. Bishop, is that seat Mr. Bishop's or is that seat Forest Nova Scotia's? So, you know, how does that do, do organizations have a seat on this round table or individuals? And if so, are there other representatives um, from forestry broadly? And if not, could there be? I know that's a mouthful. Gordon <laughs> Wilson, would you want to say a word? Yes, no, and I think those are, you know, I do appreciate, it. I think those are extremely valid points, uh, yes. Um, and, and I don't mind giving a little bit of a background and understanding too. And, and, and uh, I, I feel that the my my understanding of the previous round table and the conversations I had and the meetings with Marty Yanovich uh, and how, how great they worked as a group, uh, this new round table does have a bit of the old and a bit of the new. Um, so when I saw them function before, and the anticipation is with that same leadership of Scott Skinner that you had mentioned, and there are some very great people on there, uh, I think the power in this committee is that there is going to be uh, a full diverse representation, but the uh, the thought that just Jess Bishop will be bringing forward issues on behalf of the force industry, I don't think will be the case at all. We have some very strong people on there that um, <clears throat> uh, uh, in the form that they're going to have are going to be very open to also portray their views. But, uh, you know, I do support that letter going forward. I think that uh, maybe we could combine that also with uh, with Mr. John's letter on, on the timing of it. I know the legislation states that uh, this group is to meet annually, at the very least with the premier and the ministers, but they themselves, they'll be meeting probably more than that just to uh, get their feet underneath them. But no, I, I think it's a very valid question and one that um, I think uh, the answer to it will hopefully be what I was reflecting also. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Um, I think uh, my thought on the, this also would be that we do allow that uh, to continue, you know, the, what Claudia suggested and uh, get the answers to that in writing. And to Judy, I would say thank you if you can get this from the official transcripts and, and ask the questions. And Gordon, thank you. That's good uh, information. Uh, Brad, Mr. Johns. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. So just for clarification, uh, it, there's no motion to remove anybody. We're moving this slate as it is, correct, Mr. Chair? That is my understanding, yes. Um, you know, what I would say is uh, I, I actually, uh, in, in consultation with uh, the PC caucus uh, and staff, I, what I would say is that uh, this slate is actually a, a good representation. It's very diverse. Um, and, and I recognize there may be uh, some concerns around uh, Mr. Bishop's role there, but uh, what I would suggest is uh, given the, uh, the role that forestry plays in Nova Scotia, that industry, I think that uh, you know it is important to consult them. Uh, we did see yesterday a lot of people come forward and say that they weren't consulted in the biodiversity degree uh, uh, act that was coming forward at law amendments. And so I think uh, to ensure that we have a good balance of opinions and uh, diversity, I certainly like the slate as it is. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Johns. Any other questions? If not, we'll have a vote on this, uh, this committee. All those in favor? Any against? Motion carry. Thank you for that. I think this is a very good point for, for our government to have a, a committee such as this and the, the kind of variety of members uh, make a difference. and. We'll hopefully not so much on the companies and hopefully their individuals that have the knowledge that can really focus on on the, what they should be. Thank you. Okay, we have a uh, second Department of Health and Wellness. And uh, do I have someone that would be interested in uh, making a motion? Honorable Leo Gavine. 
thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to uh, present uh, and uh, move the names uh, to the Nova Scotia Health uh, Board. Uh, the word authority is no longer uh, uh, there. Uh, Janet Davidson as chair and director, Omni Sor Dryden, director, Gary Osborne, director, Jacqueline Thayer Scott, director, and Dr. Rex Don, director, non voting. Thank you. Any questions before we call for the motion approval? Ms. Gender? Um, I just want to say uh, that I'm pleased to see uh, Dr. Amasori Dryden's name on that list. Uh, she was um, the, the JRJR chair um, at Dal, uh, situated in, in, in health, and she's been a real champion in particular for um, looking at the kind of differential outcomes of health for racialized folks. And she's done a lot of work, on, particularly on blood and blood collection, which I know is more of a federal issue. Um, but, you know, I think as we in the NDP caucus have been advocating for better data, better racialized data, um, and a, a greater attention to differential health outcomes, which I think has become even more poignant in the, you know, in this pandemic, um, I think she'll be a great addition. So just wanted to speak in favor of that appointment. Thank you, Claudia, for those comments. Uh, Mr. Levine, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank Claudia for that uh, comment. I actually had uh, uh, quite a long discussion uh, with uh, Dr. Omnisor uh, and not knowing at the time that in fact her name was uh, coming forward uh, for the board, but uh, she, she brings uh, a tremendous perspective and background, uh, I think to, uh, to moving uh, the markers uh, a long way in terms of uh, uh, race data that can be uh, very helpful uh, in, uh, in in stronger health uh, delivery uh, for uh, especially for our uh, uh, diverse uh, and minority populations. Uh, so uh, thank you for the comment, uh, Claudia. Any other questions? Not hearing any, uh, we'll vote on the motion. All those in favor? You can raise your hand and put up your sign if you wish, yay. Um, any against? Not hearing or seeing, I will say the motion is carried. So thank you very much. That, that's the end of the ABCs. We do have a couple of uh, letters that have come in and uh, I believe everyone has received them. Uh, and if there's any questions on those letters, I think they're self-explanatory. There's two, one for the uh, uh, Minister of Communications and Culture and Heritage, and the other one, Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Uh, I think that's all cleared, no questions. Good. And we have an annual report. Uh, we'll need a motion uh, to approve the annual report, and uh, eventually we'll get into the House. So move, Mr. Chair. Sounds good. Um, the only other thing is to talk about our next meeting, which would be in April the uh, 27th at 10 to 12 noon uh, via video conference. It would be the Department uh, of Labor and Advanced Education, uh, re the Nova Scotia Loan Forgiveness Program. And just to note, uh, if the host is still sitting on that date, the committee will meet only to consider appointments to ABCs. Okay, if you have, anybody has any other uh, issues that need to be discussed right now? Mr. Hebb? You called for a motion on the report, but I don't believe you had a vote on it. Oh, I think you're absolutely correct. Thank you very much. All those in favor of the motion? Oh, it looks like it's unanimous. So, so thank you so much. Uh, not seeing anything else, uh, I would say our meeting is finished.
And thank you very much. It's been uh, very simple, very clean, and uh, lovely discussions. So thank you so much. Care. Thank you, folks. Have a great day. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good oh. day, guys.